Welcome back, friends. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to read Nakai tablature or Nakai tab. Carlos Nakai, famous Native American style flute player, well, Native American flute player, uh, developed this. Uh, this this kind of tab, what we call tab, came out of his uh, playing and reading music and notating his songs. Uh, it's pretty easy. I'm going to break it down for you um, right now. Let's get into it. So I have an F-sharp flute for this demonstration. If you want to play along, grab an F-sharp. You can use any flute. They'll just sound different. So right away, let's let's look at what we have on the page here. Because uh, there's a couple things. There's there's actually three different ways we're looking at the notes. Um, let's go to the easiest one first, actually. At the bottom, you see numbers, and those are scale degrees. So it says one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then there's another six. That's an alternate six. Uh, so listen, and I'm going to play those. And these are, again, the scale degrees. So first, you know, the root, the one, the three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here we go. And, I'll art and our alternate six is, I'll play the whole scale again, but I'm going to substitute the six over here for the other six. So that's our alternate six. So that probably sounds more typical. In the Nakai system, there's an extra sharp. There's four sharps for what we're reading right now, which is F sharp minor, because he, he uses an F sharp flute mostly. That's why we're notating in F sharp minor. Um, so this notation you're looking at is accurate for F sharp minor, the actual sound, and the notation. However, he added an extra sharp. I'm not sure why. And as a result, um, we end up with a sharp sixth degree, which is the Dorian mode. So in his notation, if you don't put the natural sign, if you put the natural sign on that sixth degree, this one over here, then you end up with the typical sound. Right? If you leave it, if you leave the four sharps over here, these little sharp guys that look like the tic-tac-toe sign, um, then you end up with the, the two-finger sixth degree, which sounds a little bit different. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. That's as technical as we're going to get as far as the modes and all that, because you don't need to know that. And in fact, our, in our musical example coming up, we're going to be just reading as if it's a five hole flute. We're not even going to use the six. How about that? So, um, so it gets easier from here on in. Now on the top here, you see finger, uh, flute finger diagrams, which I hope you're familiar with. If you're not familiar with those, um, pause this and go get familiar with them and then come back. There's lots of information online about those. It's basically just black holes are fingers down. The open hole is uh, fingers off the hole. That's all. Very simple. So now let's look at what's happening on the staff. Now in the Nakai tab, he's using the, what we call Western style notation, five lines, four spaces, right? Five lines and they make up four spaces. And you can see that there's dots on there. These are notes, note head, note uh, sta um, stem. That's the word. Uh, and so you don't even need to pay attention to the stem. The stems in this case are kind of irrelevant, um, but that has to do with rhythm. But for now, just look at number one. We've got a note on the first space, right? The first space. And that is our low note. We've got a note on the second space, all right? And that is the next note up, which in this case is the third of the scale uh, or one hole open. You can see all that, right? It's all lined up. Uh, the third line comes into play, right? And that plays that we play the fourth degree of the scale, two fingers up on the bottom. The third space is our fifth degree, which is very easy. 
because we can go just, it, that's just the top fingers closed, right? Top hand, three, three holes open on the bottom. And then from there, you can see we've got the fourth line, um, which is our sixth degree. And then the fourth space, which is our seventh degree. And then the fifth line or top line. And that is our octave, right? Our, our high note. All right. So that being said, if, you're, if you have an F sharp, you want to play along or just play along on your flute, whatever flute key you have, let's go up and just pay attention to the space that the note head is in and or the line that the note head is on. And really, let's, let's review real quick. Bottom space, our first space, second space, third line, third space, fourth line, fourth space, top line, all right? So really, we're using, we're using just about all of them except the second line, right? The second line, you could use it, but you have to do a fingering, you know, you have to do a half hole. So we're not doing that right now. So let's go up uh, from the bottom, and you can look and read along. But when you look at the notation, think about the fingering or the note degree on your on your flute, the you know the holes open and closed on your flute. So let's go. First space, second space, third line, third space, fourth line, fourth space, top line or fifth uh, line. That's it, you guys. Um, that is the thing. So let's go now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna use numbers. I might say first and fifth. So if I say first, first, fifth, fifth, that is first space, first space, third space, third space, right? Because we just reviewed that. So look and listen. That's what I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play one, one, five, five. Here we go. For some reason, I'm thinking of a nursery rhyme right now. All right, and let's do one, three, four, five. Let's just do what's written there. I'm sorry, my mistake. One, three, four, five. Let's do it again. One, two, ready, go. And now eight, seven, five, five. Right? You get that? So that would be top line, uh, top space, third space, third space. And this could be a good way to learn. Uh, maybe spend a little bit of time with this uh, graphic. And I'll give you guys this graphic along with this video, along with this post. Bottom, bottom space, third space, uh, sorry, bottom space, second space, uh, third line, third space, or you could do one, three, four, five, fourth space, top line, right? And just kind of do that on your own as a, that's what you need to learn. And you do that and you get the fingering, all right? Because the fingering is what we're focusing in on when we read Nakai Tab. Uh, so let's go on and just look at a melody, all right? And we'll do this together. Let's go to the next slide. And I have a sample melody here that I just wrote. <laughs> Very typical kind of melody. So I'm going to play it and then we'll just look at it as Nakai Tab which is about the fingering, right? So I see first space there, right? Where is that? That's, we know that that's all fingers closed. That's our number one. So I'm gonna play it and just keep thinking about the fingering as we have outlined, we just went over all the fingers in relation to the spaces and the lines, all right? Here we go. One, two, wish me luck. <laughs> Right? 
that's right. Kind of a nice melody, isn't it? Um, also, I want to point out the beginning, right, over here, and the ending down there, uh, almost the same, right? Very similar. So it's kind of a A, B, B, A form. All right, I'll do it again. And actually, let's, let's just look at, see if we can analyze it with the numbers, all right? So I'm going to go through it and just sing it and speak it. Um, and maybe try to do this with me, and this will help you get the numbers, the scale degrees, <clears throat> connecting with what you're seeing here and what you're hearing. All right, so let's go. Then let's get the note. Ooh, uh, one, two, ready, go. One, one, five, five, four, three, one, five, seven, eight, seven, five, four, five, eight, seven, five, three, four, three, four, one, one, three, five, four, three, one. All right? Now, just take as much time as you need and, you know, look at the, where the dots are, where the notes are. I'm calling them dots, <laughs> just to make it simple. Where the note heads are, spaces and lines. But you know what? This never changes. These spaces and lines don't change with the flute key. All right? And so that, my friends, is where we've been headed this whole time. Um, because in the Kai tab, and I'm going to go back to this for a second. In the Kai tab, you keep the same staff, the same key signature, which is those four tic-tac-toes, right? You keep that, and the notes on your flute are always going to be the same in, re in reference to those dots on the spaces and the lines. So even though originally he was using his F sharp flute and therefore the key signature is referring F sharp, it's actually F sharp Dorian, but F sharp minor. Um, and that's why it's like that. It's kind of convenient because we're using the whole staff, right? We're using the first space to the top line and it fits right on the flute, so that's nice. But here's the thing, you guys. When I go to grab my A flute, Right over here, now I have an A. If I was going to accurately represent my A flute on traditional style notation, I wouldn't be starting on the bottom. This low note is not on the first space. This note is on the second space. But guess what? I don't care <laughs> because I'm reading the Kai tab. And in the Kai tab, your bottom note, this note on this flute, is always the bottom space, all right? And all the other notes are the same fingering. So whether you have an F sharp flute or an A flute or a G flute or a D flute or any flute, all right? We're going to keep, um, we're going to use the same reference point, all right? So that that's really all there is to Nakai Tab. It's just saying that we're going to learn, you know, how to read notation. We're going to read Western style notation for the F sharp flute. But now when we go to a different key, we're just going to use the same notation reference. We're not going to actually change the, C the key signature and we're not going to change where the notes are. We're going to, basically it's transposing. Um, they also refer to this as a fixed do system. You don't have to know that. You don't have to remember it. It's basically just saying the bottom note is, you know, the bottom note on your flute. The bottom uh, space on the staff is the bottom note on your flute, period. We're not worrying about anything else. Change, use any flute you want, all right? So let's go back, and I'm going to uh, put up this melody again, and I'm going to play it on my A flute, 
all right? Because I'm just using that notation right there as a, uh, a map for where I put my fingers or where, what scale degrees I'm on. So I'm still looking at that and I'm saying, okay, the first line, the first space is the bottom of the flute. You know, the third space is my fifth, right? Is the th three holes open. That's it. So I'll do it on the A flute. If you have an A, you can try to read along. Let's try it again. One, two, here's the A. I added that ending. Okay, you guys, do we have it? Should we back up and just review? Um, now, does this make more sense? So again, let's review. Nakai tab is a system of notation that's based on Western notation. We're using the staff, we're using the key signature. Um, we might use a time signature, like it says 4-4 over here, over here, where is it? <laughs> over there. I have to point opposite to the camera. Um, but you know what? You don't need to know any of that stuff. You just have to look at where the notes are, where the note heads are, and remember that those are now an indicator of your scale degrees or even where you're just putting your fingers. If you don't want to remember scale degrees, you're just like, okay, first space, all holes. You know, second space, one finger up. That's all you have to know. So just uh, workshop that a little bit, woodshed that, uh, that means practice, and just repeat these and take your time, and if you want to just do, you know, you can just do first space, first space, first space, and just get that ingrained, because what you want to do is develop the muscle memory, so every time you see first space, you know that's all fingers covering, right, and this, and what we just did, this melody here is for a five hole flute or a six hole flute, it doesn't matter. So you might want to start on a five hole, right? And just do, or just do five hole melodies. And then you can go back to uh, a six hole flute and incorporate this note, right? Um, or this one, <laughs> depending on the melody that you're playing. And of course, there are other notes on the flute, right? That you could sneak in there. We've got our blues notes, our sharps and flats, you know, different different scales that we would then um, have these, maybe some other fingerings, and then we would need to maybe put a natural or a flat or whatever. So there, we can get a little more complicated from here, but I would just recommend starting off with a simple melody like this that just uses what we call the, the pentatonic scale on your flute, the minor pentatonic sound, um, and practice that. And I'll give you guys this graphic as well of this little melody. Uh, and then from here, what you can do is just go out onto the interwebs or purchase a songbook that somebody's written in the Kai tab. I believe Carlos Nakai does sell those of his own songs. There's lots of other artists that notate in the Kai tab. So that's what this is. That's what it's going to look like. Um, and you should be good from here on in. All right. So practice uh, and uh, yeah, just enjoy. And remember, you can play any flute key with Nakai tab. They're all going to sound, you know, equal as far as the melody. Uh, because it's all about the relationships, uh, the scale degrees. Okay, you guys, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. Um, I hope this is helpful. Thanks for being a patron, and I'll see you in a future video.